Whether you're a creator, a student, or just work on a computer, one of the most important tools you use by far is the keyboard. Yeah, today I'm going to be reviewing the LED backlit Bluetooth keyboard by Senda, which is a Japanese company that makes these budget but very cool looking keyboards. Externally, it looks very Mac-like and that is because it's designed to work natively with Macs. Now I'll be going over through some of the pros and cons of this keyboard and by the end of the video, hopefully you'll see if this is a good match for you. Now first of all, that design. It is slick and minimalistic, very slim with a low profile so the keys are easy to reach and type on. And I'm really digging the simplistic design and also the space gray color. It just goes great with any Mac. And also actually it looks great on any serious or professional desktop setup. The fonts are also very sharp and clear to read on the keys, especially even with the backlight on, it's still very readable. Of course, with the seven LED backlight keys, it's not only stylish, but easy to type on at night or with dim lighting. The media keys all work as a label. And be mindful that this is a keyboard designed and engineered to work with Macs. So none of the media keys, unfortunately, don't work with the Windows operating system. And I actually found that most of the keys didn't work on iOS either, or iPad OS that is. Now, the LED lights do have three levels of brightness and pressing the LED hotkey, you can toggle between the different brightness. And while holding that hotkey and pressing the up and down keys, you can easily toggle between the colors, white, yellow, green, teal, blue, purple, and red. It was very thoughtful of Sanda to include a keyboard cover but I hate keyboard covers because it just makes it harder for me, my fingers to type and slide. It's just too grippy, but it's there if you want the protection. Now included is a micro USB cable for charging, which personally I would have appreciated USB-C, but we have no control over that. Speaking of which, battery life. It is expected to run for 400 hours with the backlit off. Now that's a little over two weeks, which is plenty, but with the lights on, that time is cut to just 16 hours, which is not a lot. So expect to be charging this thing every other day. And we really can't complain considering the price is so cheap. This keyboard cost me around 4,000 yens, which it's a little over $35 and it includes the shipping and tax. So yeah, it's an amazing price for what you're getting. But not all is perfect. There's gotta be a reason why this price is so cheap and that leads us to the cons, which are not many. Again, I really love this keyboard. I'm really digging it, but there might be enough to steer some of you to another keyboard. For example, you can only pair this with one device at a time, and that's just not good in 2020. Most Bluetooth keyboards can pair to with at least three devices. And of course, as mentioned before, the battery life is on the short side when you have the backlights on. Now the keys, even though they do have some tactile to it because they are a scissor switch design, which is very similar to what Mac and MacBooks uses, they do tend to feel a little spongy. So it requires a little extra force than what I'm used to. So it could lead to some fatigue. Finally, I don't know if it has to do with my Hackintosh setup or not, but it loses connection with my Hackintosh very easily. By default, the keyboard is programmed to sleep after three minutes in idle, which is a little short if you ask me. If you get distracted reading something, doing something else, the keyboard will fall asleep and might lose connection. But that doesn't happen with my MacBook, only with the hacking touch. There is also no software to control the sleep or manage the keyboard settings. There's also no way to upgrade the firmware if there's any. So in conclusion, what can I say? I have mixed feelings on this keyboard. I love the look, the design, the whole features about the backlit and all the media keys. Everything is great. Just all well, the typing experience is just not as good as I thought. It's not even close to the Apple keyboard, which I got spoiled by. I love that keyboard, the tactile feel, but it's still compact. It's just one of the best keyboards that I have typed on. 
I also have a Logitech K811 that is kind of broken right now and that's why I'm hunting for a wireless keyboard. Even that keyboard is a little bit more comfortable to type on while still being compact, stylish and has backlit keyboards but that keyboard will run you about $100 so I don't want to buy it again. So basically, what I'm trying to say if I'm saying anything at all in this video is that you get what you pay for. A pretty good looking keyboard that performs as good as it's built. Cheap. So if you're in the market for a keyboard that works great and natively with a Mac, I can recommend this keyboard only for the fact that there are no budget friendly Bluetooth keyboards with seven LED backlighting that has media keys working out of the box and looks good anywhere out there. There just isn't one. I haven't found one that is. And if you have, please let me know. Let me know down in the comment section below. Now, instead, I'm going to be returning mine since it's not pairing well with my hacking touch and I'll be getting a mechanical keyboard so we can just get say goodbye to silent nights. Now, if you want to see the video for that keyboard, I'll be putting it up in my channel soon. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. <music>